Minister, thank you so much for joining us. No, it's a privilege. What are Ecuador's foreign policy priorities with this new administration, both regionally and internationally? Well, I would say uh, the first priority is to insert Ecuador in a very intelligent, wise and respectful way into the international community. We fully share uh, the values of, uh, of peace, of solidarity, of the full respect for human rights, of uh, democracy and public participation. And we embrace also this uh, big and important commitment of the Sustainable Development Goals. Uh, this is the, the umbrella of our National Development Plan. Uh, secondly, uh, I think that Ecuador is fully committed to regional integration. Uh, so we host UNASUR as the uh, South American uh, regional integration uh, institution. And uh, we are working towards the strengthening uh, of this uh, mechanism. Uh, we also embrace and, and support CELAC, uh, which uh, it's the community that includes all member states from Latin America and, and the Caribbean. Uh, currently, Ecuador has the um, presidency of the community of Andean nations, and we are working with our, with our neighbors. So integration is a main, uh, a main issue and a big responsibility also for Ecuador and part of our foreign policy. The third issue is the building of peace. Uh, we, uh, we really take seriously this mandate from the presidents of CELAC, uh, of Latin American and Caribbean uh, heads of state that um, uh, stated that Latin America and the Caribbean uh, has to be a region of peace. Uh, Ecuador is exercising peace internally in Ecuador through a big national dialogue uh, that w I, I would explain uh, to bring all sectors together in order to build a society that has, uh, uh, that fights poverty, that guarantees rights, uh, that lives in a peaceful way and in harmony with, the, with nature. But this principle of peace, we also projected internationally. Uh, Ecuador is the host uh, of uh, the dialogues, the peace dialogues between the ELN of Colombia and the government of, of Colombia. President uh, Moreno is having a leading role in the peace process uh, of Colombia. We fully believe that the peace in Colombia is going to be also the peace uh, for our, our entire, entire region. And we're fully uh, committed uh, to that. Uh, of course, uh, there is a whole economic side and investment side uh, to what we do. Uh, we have uh, the mandate and the responsibility to uh, bring more uh, investment uh, to Ecuador to increase and improve our exports. We are a dollar economy and we need to maintain uh, the dollarization process in, in Ecuador and therefore we need to guarantee that uh, we receive dollars. Uh, the best way to receive dollars is a wise and sustainable investment, but also the increase of our exports. That's uh, part of uh, also of, of our foreign policy. And we have a very avant-garde um, policy regarding human mobility. Migration is one of the main crises that we are facing nowadays in, in Ecuador. Uh, has, uh, first of all, is a country that has the biggest number of refugees in the entire Western Hemisphere. Uh, we have uh, close to 90,000 Colombian refugees and refugees from other nationalities uh, as well. We are a recipient country of migrants, but also we have a huge uh, Ecuadorian community living abroad. And we have developed an international network to service Ecuadorians uh, living in other countries. The biggest Ecuadorian communities are located in Spain, in Italy, the United States, and several countries in South America, like Chile, uh, Argentina, and Venezuela. So, uh, and we have passed recently a new law, uh, the, the law of, uh, of human mobility. We, uh, uh, our constitution recognizes the principle of universal citizenship and we defend that principle. Our law precisely is uh, uh, the way of, of uh, 
of uh, making this principle uh, more concrete and, and uh, develop a series of affirmative action policy in terms of the rights of human beings to be wherever they want to be. Uh, we, we believe that capital, goods and services can travel freely and in the same way human beings should be able to travel freely and be wherever they feel more, more safe and more comfortable. You mentioned peace in Colombia. Um, there's been a lot of change in Latin America, not just there, but uh, not so peaceful right now in Venezuela. There's been a lot of leadership change across the region. How is Ecuador playing a role within the neighborhood in helping its neighbors? Uh, of course, every country has internal difficulties, but we have to follow the principles of our constitution, which is not interference in internal issues of our neighboring countries, respect their sovereignty, the sovereignty of the people, uh, of the peoples of uh, the neighboring uh, country, uh, promote dialogue and peaceful means to resolve uh, any internal, internal conflicts, and, and promote uh, the basic principles of, uh, of democracy, of public participation, of free will. Uh, for us, the sovereign is, uh, is uh, the people of, of, of every country, and we need to, to respect that, of course. And of, if we can help, if we can provide a space for dialogue, if we, we can facilitate or mediate, uh, we will do so, of course, if we are requested. Uh, we are very critical of unilateral sanctions, for example, of uh, unilateral measures that only affect uh, usually the poorest, uh, the uh, innocent people, uh, society, the citizens, and we are totally against any, any uh, unilateral uh, measures against the people of wherever it is, but in particular of the people of, of, of Latin America. A lot has been said recently about what is happening in the public eye between the new president and his predecessor. A lot of accusations flying back and forth. What would you say, um, and how would you explain that to the international community? Well, it is a problem, an internal problem. I think it doesn't affect uh, the uh, commitment of President Moreno to comply with his program of work, the program of work with which he won the election. Uh, to be uh, lawful uh, to the Ecuadorian people. He is the president of every Ecuadorian, men and women, uh, and he has uh, the responsibility to really exercise uh, his, uh, his tenure as president in the best way possible and, uh, and, and, and really keep up his word. So he's, he's, uh, wor he's working, working very hard and that uh, when you look at the numbers in terms of his acceptance and the sympathy of Ecuadorians towards the president, uh, the numbers are impressive. Uh, he's above 80% of, of public acceptance. And of course there are difficulties. A, a political transition process uh, is always a challenge. And these are internal issues and my opinion is that we should deal uh, uh, we should deal with these internal issues internally. He has a fresh start. He's starting anew. What is he hoping to do differently than his predecessor? I would say that he has a completely different style because every human being is different. Uh, uh, President Moreno has a different style. He takes decisions uh, uh, in a different way. Uh, he has called for a national dialogue including every single uh, sector uh, according, you know, but of course using the basic principles of our political party, of the citizens' revolution that has uh, taken us uh, to the very moment where we are uh, now. Uh, he is not only calling for dialogue, but for greater participation. Um, having a close relationship with uh, indigenous peoples in Ecuador, with uh, women's groups, uh, with the private sector uh, as well, uh, with, the, uh, with the labor sector, uh, um, labor unions, uh, teachers, 
uh, everybody. So, and basically his lemma, his, uh, uh, he says, well, my government is the government for everybody. Uh, so the words of dialogue, of inclusion, of uh, participation, of co-responsibility in the government's decisions. Uh, he's working with that and it's working. It's working because the Ecuadorian, Ecuadorian society feels that they're taking active part of the future, of, of their own future. And I think it's, uh, it's working. And not only that he's uh, very popular and, and, and very appreciated by the, by the Ecuadorian people, but uh, also I think there are very concrete results of these very few months that he is in power. So, and the idea is uh, uh, what he's doing basically is fighting poverty and exclusion, um, uh, strengthening rights to the Ecuadorian people, especially the poorest and the vulnerable. His plan Toda Una Vida, it's called Toda Una Vida, All Your Life, uh, is basically designed to guarantee rights uh, to the Ecuadorian citizens uh, since they're born until they die uh, in a very, um, I would say, inclusive, but also using an affirmative action policy uh, in order to combat extreme poverty. Uh, his main goal is to eradicate extreme poverty in Ecuador, and it's not an easy task, of course. Is there anything that you want the else that you would like the international community to know about Ecuador? And, and what you really want people to know about this new administration? Basically, I think that this new administration uh, has a, a big commitment to human rights, uh, a big commitment uh, to ensure uh, peace, uh, security, rights, freedom to the Ecuadorian people. And uh, that our main, main challenge is to combat inequality, uh, extreme poverty. That's the full commitment of, uh, of, President, of President Moreno. And also we have uh, a responsibility, which is an international responsibility, which is uh, transparency and the fight against uh, corruption. Ecuador is doing, is, has uh, two major initiatives. One is regarding uh, fiscal justice, in order to really devote all the money that uh, sits in, uh, in tax havens uh, and all the resources that, uh, uh, that are devoted to make the, re the, the rich people richer, to invest these resources in the right to development in the Global South. So fiscal justice is one of our, our main um, priority when you're asking about priorities of our foreign policy. We are calling within the UN to create an intergovernmental body uh, entrusted uh, to uh, promote uh, fiscal cooperation among countries. And the second initiative is an initiative regarding uh, the building of a new legally binding instrument to regulate the operation of big transnational corporations with regard uh, to human rights standards. These are two initiatives that Ecuador is promoting internationally and we would invite the international community to join Ecuador and that is going to favor transparency, uh, to provide us with more uh, resources uh, to implement uh, the 2030 Agenda, the Sustainable Development Goals, and to create uh, a world uh, that is fairer uh, and more human. Minister Espinosa, thank you for joining us on America's Now. Thank you, thank you to you.